Not a cardigan, but mix it uh, up a little bit. Mix. Cardigan, but thanks for asking. Yeah. Pull over, pull over. <laughs> Actually, it's a cardigan, but thanks for noticing. No, it's a cardigan. Oh. You know, I might not have seen anything you asked me about, but I've heard the jokes. Oh, you you've never you don't know what that's from? No, it's a joke. No, it's not. It's from a movie. Oh. That's from Dumb and Dumber. When God... No, but it was a joke before the no, movie. No, it wasn't. That, yes. Dumb and Dumber is the one where that came from. I have seen Dumb and Dumber, but I, I remember watching it, having already heard the joke, because my dad told it to me, being like, I remember that joke. Yeah, your, your dad saw it on Dumb and Dumber and tried to pass it off as his oh, own. Oh, yeah, my dad went to go see Dumb and Dumber That's it, like, he, he, he has you fooled. Like, I'm an intellectual. I don't believe in screens. But meanwhile, he's going to go, ha, 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 ha. He's farting in the bathroom because the other that's guy an, put That's a personal attack. What? That's a personal attack. I know. <laughs> that's what makes it funny. Uh -huh. And on this, the 24th day of October in the year of our Lord 2023, we announce officially the end of the offseason and the dawn of a new era. Another year of narratives to pick apart and put back together again right here on Oddball. I'm Amina Hassan. That's Charlotte Wilder. These are the headlines. actual games to talk about i could cry victor Wembanyama put on quite a show in the spurs preseason game against the warriors over the weekend he recorded 19 points four rebounds and five blocks and i was just laughing at my television i was like this man is an alien how can anybody guard him what are teams going to do about him i think the spurs are going to win the finals it was a it was a very emotional experience for some viewers on the couches at home that's not what you said you said spurs and six I, well yes i did also no, say no, that don't hide from your hot takes spurs and six baby <laughs> some of the best jokes came to us as always from the internet this one from at talk hoops victor Wemenyama makes wiggins look like he puts 511 on his dating profile sounds like talk hoops speaks from experience mm -hmm. well, how about this Victor Wembanyama makes Wiggins look like Bobby from King of the Hill. That's from noted stand-up comic Ian Carmel. Or what about this one? Victor Wembanyama makes Wiggins look like Amino Hassan sitting next to Antonio Davis on the sports center. Say, hey, you guys did that thing again when you slipped in something that's at my expense. Spot the line. It's spot the line. Knock it off. Bradley Beal revealed to Anscape that his preference was to join the Miami Heat, but that Heat ownership showed no interest in, quote, my initial favorite was Miami. And so we call Miami, call Pat, and Pat says, well, I'll go talk to Mickey, Heat owner Mickey Harrison, and figure it out. So he goes and talks to Mickey, and I'm like, okay, what's Miami doing? Dragging feet. And eventually it came to a point where Miami said they just can't do it. And that was kind of like a gut punch. I was like, dang, that was my spot. But it was an eye opener for sure. To be fair. Did you see Cole Swider in Summer League? Oh, my God, that guy couldn't miss. <laughs> an eye opener. That's an eye opener right there. Cole Swider mania sweeps the nation. Talk about heat. Not what he looks like, just how he plays. I, I, I just imagined Pacino and De Niro at a, a table in a diner. Talking about when the heat's around the corner. That's another movie reference that Charlotte doesn't get. So, Tax Taxi? <laughs> yes, Taxi. Taxi, starring Queen Latifah and Jimmy Fallon and Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, apparently. Tyler Hero tries to continue to put the trade that never happened behind him, but not before speaking to The Ringer, where he said that he had his shit packed up and he really didn't talk to anyone on the heat except for Udonis Haslam all summer. Now, this is, I feel like Tyler Hero just keeps saying things that he says he doesn't need to say. And, and, and it's also sort of like when your friend breaks up with the significant other you really didn't like, and you're like, oh, thank God, that guy sucked, and then they get married. Yeah. You ever had that where they break up with the person you don't like, 
and then you talk to them and they're they're on speakerphone and they don't tell you that not only have they gotten back with the person you don't like, but that person is sitting right next to them on speakerphone, uh, hearing you go into extreme excruciating detail about how much you don't like them and how much, man, your life is so much better now that you got that so-and-so out of your life, only to hear their unmistakable voice say, hi, I mean, in a way that's meant to be friendly, but clearly isn't. It means actually the opposite. Like, I'd like to kill you and, oh, you'll never be part of our lives again. You ever had that happen, Charlotte? <laughs> Uh, no, not the Amin, not the high Amin part, at least. Oh, after 19 seasons, four NBA titles, and a 2015 Finals MVP, Andre Iguodala has announced his retirement from the NBA. Per the Warriors, owner Joe Lacob said he looks forward to raising number nine to the Raptors at Chase Center at some point in the future. You know what's funny? Uh, ever since the Grizzlies took umbrage about Iguodala not wanting to play for them. Like, his life's been pretty good. He's won a championship. He's been to the finals another time. Uh, he started a very successful podcast. His uh, his investment in Zoom has been tremendous. And meanwhile, they've, uh, yeah. Yeah. You get the picture of what's happening. Yeah. Is... Everyone understands. Speaking of the Grizzlies, season hasn't even started yet. And they already have a season-ending injury this time to starting center. Steven Adams, who underwent knee surgery the other day. Following the surgery, Adams is expected to return to his homeland under the sea for some much-needed aqua therapy. You got that? It's an Aquaman joke. I did. Yeah. I did get that. Haven't yeah. seen it. Uh, the sequel, the director of the sequel said it's his Tango and Cash. Charlotte, have you watched Tango and Cash? No. Cool. Then you'll just love Aquaman, I guess. <laughs> Can't wait. I need to keep a list, a running list. Someone of all is the... out there. Someone is out. Trust me, it's the internet. Someone is. I'd be flattered. If you're doing that, send it to me. Justin Bieber played basketball over the Ugh. weekend, and it looked like what would happen if you took all of Tyler Hero's basketball abilities away from him. He's terrible. I'm going to say it. He's awful. I don't care who he is. Get him off the court. Court, please it's an affront it's an affront to my basketball sensibilities like i am offended it's a hate crime watching that i mean we have it on a loop yeah yeah i bet we do i'm, I'm gonna go vomit after this it's just terrible the new leaks are out for this season's nike city edition jerseys and they're awful on behalf of everyone i'd just like to say nike stop just stop. Get the shit in order, NBA, for Christ's sake. What are we doing? Uh, this looks like children designed them. Ooh, I spilled black paint. Let me just wipe it off with my finger. Get a grip. You know what? You know what we need, Charlotte? What? Home white. Road color. Alternate jersey. Throwback. That's it. That's the list. And when I'm you're at cool home... You wear your home jersey. The Lakers can wear gold. Don't uh, wear, ooh, the, Lakers, ooh, the Lakers can wear gold for themselves. All right, cool. That's it. Road teams wear the color. Home teams wear the white or gold if you're the Lakers. And that's it. No mas. I'm not putting up with this anymore. We all Which is good because and... you are the one person who can stop it. So I'm just saying, you know, like I remember when Adidas had it and we were like, oh, my God, these jerseys are so ugly. Can't wait for Nike to take over. You know what? Biggest mistake of my life. In other Nike news, the company has announced the signing of 13 rookies, most notably including Wembenyama, who signed for a reported $100 million. And all I can think is how long is the tail end of the swoosh going to have to be on his shoes? Four feet. It's going to be four <laughs> feet long. It's like a wedding dress. It has gonna a train. Have... <laughs> it's gonna, yeah, it's going to be a bunch of swooshes, one after yeah. another. In other, other Nike news, Giannis gave his Bucks teammates new pairs of his Freak 5 sneakers, including new teammate and noted Adidas enthusiast Damian Lillard. It's kind of like he heard our convo about Russ giving out iPhones to his teammates and said, oh, my beer, I can get a little cheaper than this. 
Like the shoes all fall off the cart in the video. It's like, oh, God. I just realized after three straight Nike hit piece headlines, we're never going to get sponsored by Nike. I'm Can never, we... I'm never, I'm never winning another uh, uh, auction on sneakers or whatever the f they're called. Uh, auction? Is it called auction? Whatever. Draw. I never went on a draw on, on, on sneakers app ever. What if we just cut? But I did cut. it for you. Yeah. No. All right. No, okay. no, no. I did it for the people. All right. Okay. Not to be outshined by Jimmy Butler's media day emo look or frankly common sense. The Wizards' Kyle Kuzma showed off a new hairstyle. And I think it's safe to say it's a kiss of death for his style credibility. No. Do you see it? It's like, oh my I God. Yeah. Holy yeah. hell. They said it looks like. He uh, needs some friends. Does uh, he have any friends? It's like SpongeBob's grandma gave him a kiss on his head, is what people said. I don't get the <laughs> reference because I don't like SpongeBob. Me neither. Okay. Good job. Thanks. Uh, LeBron James told Dave McMenamin of ESPN that he picks and chooses who he responds to of his naysayers, but that one day, quote, there will be a time. When that time is, I don't know. I don't know if it's now or dot, dot, dot. There will be a time. There will be a time when everybody will get it for sure. Ouch. Oh, my God. This is going to be the worst 15-part documentary of my life. I'm, I'm just excited to watch Skip Bayless be all over someone else's documentary again. Because God knows. There's no other voice out there that matters other than Skip Bayless. At least the athletes. And finally, the Oklahoma City Thunder have waived Jack White. Not that Jack White. Although, if it is that Jack White, can we now ban Seven Nation Army from every arena? Yes? Uh, Maybe? Uh, 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 no, uh, no, 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 no. We don't have the right. I'm going to hear that as I'm being lowered into my grave. <laughs> So we're finally here, Charlotte. The start of the season. We got two games tonight. We got Lakers at Nuggets for ring night, which seems especially cruel by the NBA on both sides, right? Like the Lakers have to watch the Nuggets get their banner rays and get their rings and all that stuff. And the Nuggets have to watch everyone pay attention to the Lakers and not them. I was like, gonna say oh my <laughs> my rings are here. Why it are you might be over worse. There? The Nuggets were the ones who were like we're in the finals. Why is everybody talking about the Lakers? It's it's kind of a prank. I feel like the NBA is pulling on both teams, and I sort of like it. Yeah, and the pranks don't stop there because the evening game is like, hey, Chris Paul, how about we have you play against the team that traded you that kicked you to the curb? I mean. Unceremoniously. I mean, wow. How cruel was Adam Silver this year? It's so good. It's just the juiciest lineup like making chris paul play against the suns making him play with draymond at all really uh it's like the best reality lineup we could have it's like the golden state bachelor it's, See what it's I did ptsd there? it's 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 just one nice little tidy ptsd night <laughs> for for chris paul it's really and, and mean i know but like on the other hand did you know this is only the second game kevin durant has played or will have played at Golden State since he left. How is that and by, possible? And one of, them hap one of them happened in an empty stadium because that was the COVID, the four, four times of COVID. So, uh, so it he doesn't play count. In front of fans. Yeah, absolutely doesn't count. So this one's going to be the first time in Stugatz's mm -hmm. record book that Kevin Durant plays at Golden State. And you know what? What? What's that? Like four years? It's actually a pretty smart, like the last four and a half years. That's a smart tactic. It's like, I'm going to be gone so long. By the time I play there, they're going to forget I ever played here. And people are just going to give me kind of like a nonchalant half clap, half boo. Like, I don't know. I like him. He's a good player, but uh, he's on the other team. So, right? There's gonna, we... There's, we won't have any of that venom of people. Who are like, oh, I can't believe you left us at the altar. I don't know. I feel like they're, I feel like sport, if anyone can hold a grudge, it's sports fans. But I, I just have absolutely no idea what the, why? Because Warriors won without him. One, they won without him, too. That's a wine and cheese crowd over there. Come on. Okay, they're, fair. There's a bunch of tech bros. We're going down <laughs> to their Google suites where they don't even have to see the cord. They have like a sommelier on call right there mixing stuff up for them. They hit a button. The wall inside the suite turns into a big TV, but not the TV view, the view of what it looks like if you were sitting in your seats out in the bowl. That's right. 
I didn't make any of that up. That's real. Those are real bunker suites at Golden State that they have. And these are the people who are supposed to hold a grudge? Come on. I could not hate all of that more. Couldn't hate it more. It it is conspicuous consumption at the highest degree. (laughs) Late stage capitalism is wild. No, this is it. And then, you know, in a few years, we're going to have like uh, lions in the arena and people people (laughs) fighting for their lives. Yeah, but please don't let me in Chase Arena. Oh, come on. Stop it. So, Charlotte, what are you looking forward to the most? I think Nuggets Lakers. Well, no, the Chris Paul. I don't know. All of it. I mean, I'm really, I'm like really psyched about both of these games. I think my mind immediately goes, I just love watching Jokic play. I think it's funny because last year during the finals, Stu Gatz on on the main Levichard show kept being like, I hate watching him play, but I actually, I actually love it. We went to the Clippers preseason game when they played the Nuggets when we were out in LA and just watching him, like, I feel so safe when he's on the court. If yeah. there's a rebound, I'm like, oh, Nicola's got it. I, it's like, it's very comforting. So I'm excited for that from a basketball point of view, from a drama point of view. Uh, Chris Paul, just straight up, just Chris Paul in general. It's funny because you said you feel safe whenever you watch Jokic play. Mm-hmm. And most people feel the opposite because his brothers are around. Um, <laughs> okay. I think Fair. for me. What are you? Yeah. This is completely chaotic, but I'm waiting for that first meltdown by Golden State. I want to see Chris Paul and Draymond Green like an old screwball comedy from like the 50s. Just start talking really fast at each other, pointing up, pointing out like in the middle of the game. I want the Suns to freeze and be like, are they okay? (laughs) <laughs> and Steph Curry to kind of like exhale, like, oh, God, this is going to be a long season. He just puts the I, towel over his head right away. On court, though. Like, yeah. he's not even on the <laughs> bench. I want Steve Kerr to go and grab Frank Vogel's clipboard and break that, too, for him because one clipboard isn't enough. I, By the way, I don't want this for the entire season. I just want Gabe One to be incredibly disastrous and have to watch some kind of rebuild from that. I, I mean, that would why. probably... I, I I like I feel like it's sort of inevitable at some point that that will happen. And if they do it game one, A, it's the funniest possible outcome for opening night. And B, then they can just, there's nowhere to go but up. I mean, actually, it's the Warriors, so they could find a way to go. Well, Raymond some, could find some, a way to send it south. But, uh, exactly. you know. So, someone someone could get punched so hard they end up in Washington yeah. at any given moment. Uh, <laughs> punched but, all reminder, the way to the Wizards. Reminder, if you are looking to make the action even more interesting and exciting, head on over to DraftKings, DraftKings Sportsbook, and put a little action, you know, if it's legal in your area. And again, I'd like to point out, I don't know if everyone saw this, but uh, DraftKings has now become the number one sportsbook in America. So you're welcome. Rock on. All right, Charlotte, who do you think is going to have the biggest night tonight? You know, I mean, I'm going to let you answer who's going to have the biggest night because I'm going to answer who is going to try the hardest. Okay. Because I think well, that's I think that's different. I think LeBron is going to try very, very, very hard in game one against the Nuggets. Yeah, I, I think, well, the first thing you always got to point out is ring night always starts with a lot of emotion, a lot of mm-hmm. adrenaline, and then people usually run out. And so I don't expect the Nuggets to continue to look good past the first quarter just because they're going to be so drained. Uh, And again, it's one of 82, so who cares? So I think uh, I like your LeBron pick. I see your LeBron pick, and I raise you. I think Devin Booker is going to have a big night. Devin Booker is a guy who thrives off of having other distractions on the floor that people have to pay attention to. For so long of his career, he's had to been the main threat, the only threat. And that means that defenses are all targeted at stopping him. Uh, I think with Beal on one wing and Durant on the other, he's going to see a lot of single coverage, a lot more than he's seen in quite a long time. And so I think Book's going to come out and have a great night. He's also had a quiet off season. Like no one's been talking about him because there's been so much other stuff. Well, I get sneakers. The new sneakers. Oh yeah, sneakers. Sorry, but even that—that's like a nice thing. That's like a nice thing. It's not like oh, this guy might leave or this guy, I don't know. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah like 
turmoil and controversy, right? Yeah, he just got to release some sneakers and then he's all well rested and he can go play and, you know, have a huge night. I think I think you're right. I like that pick. Okay, now you're going to tell me who you think is going to have a great night. You just told me LeBron's going to play hard and you agreed with my pick. Do you have any original thoughts of your own, Charlotte? Oh, my God. That was mean. Um, I mean, I was thinking Booker before you said it. So, no, I don't have any original <laughs> thoughts of my own. <laughs> All right. Um, who's got the most pressure on them? LeBron, sort of, but also the nut. I mean, the nut. I feel like everybody in this situation, these these four teams that are starting opening night, are all under a microscope in very different ways. So. I don't know how to answer that one. I mean, except LeBron, because he's the oldest player in the league and everyone's like, oh, can he still do it? He has to be like, yes, I can. Here you go. I'm not eating on the bench. Watch me dunk. I think Chris Paul, because everyone knows how perfect that Golden State offense is, even when mm-hmm. it like they're, they're not winning or you know they're missing shots or whatever. And remember, they were very dominant at home last year. Thirty two wins at Chase Center. So Chris Paul, not only do you have like the burden of, hey, we got to win games, but also you can't screw how this thing looks, right? You can't screw that up. If you do, everyone's like, remember when the Warriors were fun to watch before the ball just pounded into one spot over and over and over again before resorting to a 15-foot contested jump shot? Like, that's what we don't want to see. And he's kind of like, he's got a little bit of a burden there, I think, to make sure that doesn't happen. Here's a question for you. Can Chris Paul win like public relations wise this season it feels like if the warriors do well then it'll be like great good for chris paul i guess only if he finally if draymond finally helps him get that championship aside from that i feel like there's no way he can come out of this looking great because it either works and everyone's like cool we don't really care that much or it doesn't work and it's definitely his fault because that's the biggest thing we changed yes (laughs) <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh. Oh, looking forward to the season of being the villain all over again what's uh, the best hot dog you've ever had the worst hot dog the best hot dog you've ever had um it's funny I, there's a place by the studio here that has like um Wagyu beef hot dogs and I had one and I'm like this is a hot dog like what are we doing here it's, it's just a yeah. hot dog like the, you can't fancify a hot dog it's just I a just hot want dog. a snap I want a good snap and I want a what um like a snap when you bite into it oh crunch like I don't like a mushy I don't like a yeah, mushy you, you case like, I want okay. like a crisp hot dog we had uh we had some hot dogs at the baseball game the other day we had the team outing Pretty yeah, good were they good? dogs. They were Nathan's. I was like, they're pretty, pretty, pretty good dogs. And they had, you know Nathan's? what? They had the fixings because that's that's the big thing about hot dogs. They're gonna tell them, tell me about the hot dog. Tell me about the fixings. Ketchup, mustard, yawn. Like everyone has that. Relish, sauerkraut. Yeah. Now you're talking Every, grilled onions. The, the grilled onion, like it, that's a New York thing. You can go most places, they don't have it. I have to buy uh, the sabret onions in the sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bought that on Amazon. For home. Whenever I have hot dogs, I have to. Wow. Yeah. But most places you can't get a good hot dog. That's the thing. These Chicago people are like, no, I need like um, onions and celery. A like, pickle on it. What are you I doing? I do like that. I do like I that. Yep, yep, yep. Mm. Ah. Yep, 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 yep. <clears throat> I'm amino acid. <laughs> I'm about to take a leak. I'm amino acid here with Charlotte Wilder, and together we talk. Like, uh, I'm amino acid here with Charlotte Wilder, and together we talk NBA like no one else on a show called Oddball. Can I turn away from the wall now? Yep, 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 yep.